Day one. Yeah, we got a south wind. We're just gonna walk right into it. I'm with Troy Fowler in Southern Texas bow hunting for feral hogs. In a previous career, Troy worked as a registered respiratory therapist. Although the human body isn't exactly like a pig's or deer's, Troy's education gave him an in-depth understanding of vital organs. When he opens up an animal, every vein and artery has a name and a purpose. This helps immensely with understanding shot placement. Troy shares his anatomical knowledge with the world via his YouTube channel called Ranch Fairies, where he also covers sharpening broadheads and testing arrows, among other things. I mean, bow and arrows are such a short range weapon, but we got to figure out right now where to go ambush. <laughs> All right, T minus. About an hour away. Boop. About an hour. I said I wasn't going to shoot a pig. I guess that changed. I'm interested in seeing Troy perform a necropsy on one of these pigs. I'm here to learn about how an arrow kills an animal and to fill the freezer. Troy and I split up, doubling our chances of bringing home the bacon. got a pretty stiff 25 mile an hour wind out of the south so we basically drove to the north and we're just gonna still hunt our way to another road the ranch we're hunting is home to a collection of native and exotic animals hogs nilgai white-tailed deer javelinas just to name a few it is a game rich environment which is good but also poses its own problems. Just when you think you're making a good stalk, a non-target animal spots you, spooks, and then spooks whatever you're after. Yeah, they saw me. I made it to 130 yards. And then I got busted by this white tail ball. I'm just going to use it as an opportunity to work on my sneaking. I've never snuck through this type of country. I'm in like, even though it's super dry here, I'm standing in like three inches of water in this like, I don't know, a little wetland area. Anyways, I, you know, it's just good to get into the, the rhythm of what it's going to take to make some moves through here. And it's funny, you think it's like open and you're moving right along. And then as soon as you try to, you know, make a straight line to an animal, there's all of a sudden like impenetrable chunks of brush, vegetation that you're gonna have to go around. And unfortunately, like going around causes you to move perpendicular to the animal, which exposes you a lot more. When you see pigs grazing by themselves, you gotta be looking for the one that you don't expect. This happens to me all the time. So we've got three or four over there. And there'll be one like over there and he'll pull you out. So as you're stalking in on him, always be looking for one. Hogs are relatively nearsighted and tend to be preoccupied while feeding. This can make for an easier stalk than other big game animals, but that doesn't mean that they're easy. Pig noses and ears are sharp, and if the wind isn't in your favor, forget about it. This is my first time stalking pigs. My plan is to move while their heads are down and stand absolutely still when they pick them up. That's a signpost. That's a signpost tree. He's sitting working it. He 
He's in the perfect spot. Those two little limbs are right in the way on his kill zone. It's like he knows what he's doing. I'd be moving, but there's really no shots. It's very thick, even if I stand up over here. That way, puts these pigs in play that get seen, so we're just gonna let it unfold. Being patient will always be in your favor. Hogs don't move too far or fast while feeding. Their rude table manners will often give them away, exposing their location, even if you can't see them. I've shot a lot of these dadgum things. It was super fun to be that close to them that long. It's fun to hear them interact in this stuff. Sweet. Perfect quarter in the lane. Took him through there. That's the impact side, okay? <laughs> Look where the exit is. The entry wound's right here. Is that crazy? We got one down, it's a nice sow. Actually, for eating, this is a perfect pig to eat. 15-yard um, shot, pig went nowhere. Perfect for arrow performance. It's hot, it's gonna get to be 85. We need to get her out of here. This will be a good eating pig, so we want the meat to be preserved. We got roads here and there, so I'm just gonna basically, we'll drag it, get to a road, and then we'll go back and get the ranch vehicle. I came way south. And um, I got a road that basically goes almost from like pothole to pothole. So I got five or six uh, water holes to work just going up this road back towards the main house. So I'm just going to use the road to move quickly, quietly, and just creep along when I get to the water holes. So they sense something. I got caught just one time, micro movement. And it was enough that they kind of picked up their pace. They haven't just blown out of here, but it's gonna be hard to keep up with them and get a good shot. Like we saw with Troy's hog, it's a mix of still hunting and spot and stalk to get within range. It's almost as if the pigs know to put foliage between themselves and me. Getting an open shooting lane is going to be a combo of persistence and luck.
that was awesome. I've never personally gotten to put a stalk on a wild pig with a bowl. And I kind of blew it once. I just kind of kept coming down after him and caught up to him again. He was patient, offered me up a great 15 yard shot. And uh, I watched her fall over. I was super pumped. That was so fun stalking that. I've got me down and I'm looking across this pond and there's two giant pigs. So, I'm gonna make another quick move and see if I can pull that off again. I shot that one high. I think it was a pure meat shot. Yeah, zero blood, zero. I hate to have injured an animal like that. But like Troy said, their bodies do worse things to them when they're fighting. I mean, he's definitely got a hole in his muscle. But I bet it's barely bleeding. There's basically a hole in his back strap. But there's absolutely zero reason to go look for that hog. I'll bring the uh, truck around and pick up my meat. Let me see your quiver. <laughs> <laughs> and just go look at the pig. That's not a big pig? No, that's a small pig. God, you think it's, how big do you think it is? 100 pounds. And what's like the biggest you've ever seen Two or shot? 265 is the biggest I've ever seen, and it's it's you, nose here, feet off the ground. That's not a big one. We stayed on these two boars, and I literally went, nope, and he would walk through, and then he'd walk in the brush, and there was no shot, and then finally, we this one was just rooting, and she made a grievous error. What was her error? She stayed too close to us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> one interesting thing, and we'll talk about this later, that's the exit. Uh -huh. The entry's here on the other side. Was she broadside, quartering, or? They were associated with water. They were just in it, rooting around. Mm -hmm. Actually in the water. Yeah, the water was on the front side and they were digging around. They, they were just, there was just, it was just roto-tilled. Yeah, let's, uh, let's go and uh, peel her out and see what happened on the inside. Yeah, we'll do that. That'll be fun. I've dissected my fair share of animals but I'm curious to see what I can learn about shot placement from someone who understands respiratory anatomy professionally. Sweet. That's a healthy feeling critter. Yeah. So this is one thing you see a lot and pigs are real bad about jumping the string. You hear people talk about jumping the string, da 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 da, where the animal reacts as the arrow's approaching. The jump is like a second later. If your arrow is there for the jump, you were way late. You're way late, that's correct. So the arrow entered Right here, 
Right where we're supposed to. This yep. is where I was aiming. So she was facing left, right. quartering away. So you were like mid body it was mass. Still lower one third, right? Yep. But she was quartering away, which is my preferred shot on every animal on the planet. That's the shot to take if you can get it. The exit wound is right here. Wow. So she rolled pretty good. Feels like, like top it, of the scapula. You might have yeah. even clipped the scapula. I might have punched through it or something. We'll see when we get her apart. Now, this could have been her taking a step. Yeah. She, she could have not jumped me. But you figure this angle is caused not because she's actually moving the trajectory of the arrow, but more because her body just she changed moved. to the trajectory right. of the arrow. That's correct. Yeah. The arrow was coming in straight. I was on the ground. I was down. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't downhill. Yeah. Right? And we have a high, higher exit than we have an entry. I think what happened, we obviously have a lung penetration, high lung penetration, and we possibly severed the thoracic aorta, which is right here, and that's why she went down so fast, and we will see that once we get her open. So what we're gonna do now is, I'm gonna get her opened up and get the internal organs behind the diaphragm out of her, so we can look at the, what the arrow did. Yeah. So you first had to go through hide, then right. we'll see if you went through a rib, then you went through the guts. Yep, dead center. So it went straight in the back of the lungs when it does that. That hole right there. Yeah, it looks like it's almost dead center. Mm -hmm. On the diaphragm. And that's super lethal. So we have a great big wound here, and then we have one that's just right at the width of the broadhead, punching through something, and it's very dense. So it it didn't move around as much. You see this on impacts. You don't see a big hole in the impact. The tissue's so dense, it doesn't wind up. I was just gonna say what's impressive to me is that you think there's a quarter and away shot is gonna enter like right at the diaphragm or maybe just behind. And in my mind, I'm just thinking, oh, it's going through the ribs and then it's gonna hit the lungs. Then it's mm -hmm. gonna be quarter, you know, at the quartering away angle. But mm -hmm. no, this is like a center mass shot you know, which is the angle you wanted for quarter and away. And already it's gone through like probably close to 12 inches uh -huh. of stuff with before yeah. it's reached the vitals. Correct, before. This is even cooler. Look at this. Wow. So it hit this part of the, li of the liver, because the liver's hanging, mm -hmm. went by, scalloped this out, and then through the diaphragm. Yep. So we've already done a pretty significant amount of damage. Liver hit wouldn't bleed very well, but it's in the right place. That is not my knife. That's what was way up here. Yeah, no, no, no. There's no reason you would have stuck your knife all the way through. The like entry, or the exit side on the liver here is bigger than the entry because it rotated. That's some cool stuff. You want me to just follow the line of the... Go um, right here and split it all the way to the rib cage, just right there. Okay. There's my... Entry wound. All right, we skinned the pig back, mm -hmm. and we've got it set up where the kill zone starts now. We're gonna have to push the diaphragm forward a little bit because we don't have any guts in here. The uh, diaphragm's artificially back. Right? I see. So it would be more like that. But the diaphragm is pretty much lined up with this cut we made here. Correct. That's the back of the, the kill zones right there. So for the pig hunters out here, to be honest, you need to be visualizing this is all you got, broadside. Mm -hmm. That right there, here's the elbow, okay? If it was standing, it'd be about like that. Yeah. Corner of the point of the shoulder's there. That's a solid bone. If you have the right stuff, you can go through that. And then the shoulder blade, this is all, this is nothing. It's yeah, just that's meat. just muscle, knee. But here's the trick. That's how big it is. Your, your vital spot. Yeah. On well, the pig this size, and they don't get, um, this doesn't get that much bigger on the big ones. They get bigger shoulder blades and stuff. It's weird. Well, There's that a... right there is probably enough to make them tough. Correct. Because when you have a target this big and a bunch of people can't hit that. And they're and twitching. You, and you miss it, mm -hmm. then you think, oh my God, it's so it's tough because I hit it in the right correct. spot, but you didn't hit it in the Absolutely right correct. This is just one of those physiologic facts that people don't talk about. And also another thing is the spine goes in in the back of their neck. Your spine's right here. Remember, everybody, everybody's mentally oriented on deer type animals and their spine goes like this and then their head goes up so their spine is high. Mm -hmm. Well, that's his mouth. The spine goes in right about here, it drops. So this up here is nothing. 
There's a lot of arrows out. My, me and my buddies have whistled through here. They don't even die. They just go. But my friends do worse stuff to me than that sure, <laughs> sure. when they're fighting and stuff. So if you're going to visualize pig hunting, you know. Yep, you heard it. A lot of arrows have whistled right through there, just like mine did a few hours earlier. I should have checked the range one more time. The thing about the quartering away shot on everything on earth is the lungs typically go up and even on pigs, they're very vertical. Mm -hmm. So that lung is tall here. So coming in back here, it, it's got a really high percentage chance of hitting the lungs really hard and making long wounds this way, mm -hmm. which hopefully we'll see when we get the lungs out of this thing. We already saw, we went through the guts. We mm -hmm. smashed the liver pretty good. Diaphragm. We enter the lung back here. Mm -hmm. we exit the lung right in front. But look, you got the other lung too. Isn't that the yeah. other lung right we there? We clipped the top of the other lung on this side mm -hmm. and took the top of that off. But the biggest damage here, the reason why it went down so fast is because we severed the thoracic aorta. Look at that. And it's coming right out of There's the There's some heart. blood going to come out of there. Right. It's That's all this blood that's right here. It's five inches in from my the heart. hands. Five I mean, inches from the heart. Right. That feels like dang near a pound of blood. Right. But it's five inches from the heart. So that was why it was so devastating. And if she wouldn't have rolled, this wound would have been more across mm -hmm. the aortic arch. Right. And like I said earlier, look where the spine goes. Look at the void. Lady. But you could see how she, if she had just gotten a split second on you and dropped another inch or two, you could have gone right over the top of the lungs and broke her back or, yeah. or avoided her. Yeah, or not hit the back mm -hmm. at all and hit the, hit the back. And what would have happened is we'd have lost the pig because we'd, we'd had no blood trail. We'd had a gut plugged hole. Right. That's another reason for why uh, penetration wins in the archery game. The more organs you can hit and completely pass through, the better off you are because you don't have hydrostatic shock. You don't have any other stuff that goes on with bullets, some of the disruption they cause. Once I started doing this and taking the time to do this, it's annoying. We've been here an hour and a half. It's gross. <laughs> but man, you learn so much. And then so when you much. shoot the next one, you go and your head, head starts spinning back. Yeah. to all these necropsies that I've done. And I say, okay, I know what that is. Or people bring me video in and I go, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, some people could look at this as like, sort of like you're not taking care of the meat because we're out here in the heat and you're not like cool. getting it cooled enough, fast enough. And like, it could even be disrespectful to the animal because we're doing all this. But man, like you owe it to yourself and the animal to know these critters inside and right. out. Right. So when you shoot, you're right. like, I know exactly what my arrow is going through. It's easy to be in a rush when the animal is down. We all want to get back to the truck for cold beer after packing or dragging one out of the woods. But I urge everyone to take the time to see what your arrow did inside of the animal. It doesn't have to happen on a table either. A lot can be learned just looking through the guts and vital organs to see what the arrow passed through. The extra half an hour you spend doing a necropsy on your next kill might save you several hours of tracking the next time you get a shot opportunity.